Hello, hello. Good evening sa lahat. Um, I started the recording na din for those of you na, uh, for some of your classmates na hindi makaka-join. Again, the attendance for CS210 is not required. So, um, I will also post yung recording ng session na to sa um, uvlen natin. Okay? So, for this session, 6 to 9 p.m. yung time talaga natin for uh, for this class. Um, in my previous uh, classes na may 6 to 9 din, usually asynchronous kami. So, hindi naman, um, at if meron kaming synchronous session, usually hindi umaabot ng 3 hours yung whole duration. In a face-to-face -face scenario, usually umaabot talaga ng, uh, ng, ano, ng 6 to 9, yung actual na ginagamit. Pero sabi nga nila, may mga tirawag na Zoom fatigue. So as much as possible, hindi ganun ka-advisable na ganun kahaba yung meetings. Uh, for this session, we have two lecture slides. Um, the first one is Lecture 1.1. It's Introduction to Algorithmic Problem Solving. Uh, later on, meron tayong 1.2. And yung 1.2 natin, uh, before we start, magkaroon siguro tayo ng, uh, ng break, mga 5 to 10 minutes break. Okay, so hindi ko pa na time kung gaano ka katagal yung lecture natin for this evening. Uh, pero let's see kung ano, kung hanggang saan tayo abot. Okay. So, uh, mag-start na ako sa lecture 1.1. Okay, so yung overview ng uh, lecture 1.1 consists of three parts. Uh, what is an algorithm? Fundamentals of algorithmic problem solving. So, for the fundamentals of algorithmic problem solving, uh, basically it's just the steps you need to follow when you design an algorithm. And then C is um, different uh, problem types. So before we answer the what, let's start with why. So bakit nga ba natin inaaral yung algorithms? Uh, we have two um, reasons why. Yung isa practical, yung isa theoretical. For um, practicality, we study algorithms because we wanted to um, be familiar with our tool set. So if you encounter a computational problem somewhere, um, we should know kung ano na yung mga existing algorithms uh, na available na pwede nating magamit. And for the theoretical um, reason naman, uh, if you wanted to design a new algorithm uh, and then analyze yung corresponding performance or efficiency of that you know, new algorithm. Bakit necessary pa rin na nagde-design ng new algorithms? Because uh, we wanted to have a better algorithm for a known problem. Sometimes we have a new variant of a problem so necessary na mag-design ng new algorithm for that because sometimes hindi pa nag exist yung solution. Uh, and ano pa yung other reasons? Computer programs na uh, alam natin or familiar tayo now would not exist without algorithms. For example, like yung Google, uh, we have the page rank algorithm to identify yung mga top search natin. Um, ano pa ba? Uh, even dating sites, may mga underlying algorithms na ginagamit uh, for it to work. Okay, so um, aside from actual programming, uh, algorithm, studying algorithms is also important in developing analytical skills, uh, speci uh, especially in problem solving skills, because in order to create an algorithm, uh, mahahasa dito yung problem solving skills natin because we're basically solving a problem, uh, just using a computer. Uh, to solve that problem. According to the Yoda of Silicon Valley, sabi nga nila, si Donald uh, Knuth, uh, a person well-trained in computer science knows how to deal with algorithms. And by dealing with algorithms, how to construct or create, how to manipulate the algorithms, when we manipulate an algorithm, pwede magbago yung performance uh, or efficiency ng algorithm na yun. And ano pa, uh, to understand them, so given yung mga nagawa na ng mga other computer scientists, we should be able to um, know how to implement it and understand them first. And then later on, if we create, construct an algorithm, we also need to know how to analyze them. So this knowledge is preparation for more than writing good computer programs. 
Uh, sabi nga dito, katulad ng nabanggit ko kaninang rationale, uh, it's a general purpose mental tool that will be defin- uh, a definite aid to understanding of other subjects regardless kung ano pang industry because uh, like uh, chemistry, linguistics, music, because there are always um, computational problems arising from those um, uh, fields. Uh, the reason for this may be understood in the following way. Uh, sab- sabi dito ay, it has often been said that a person does not really understand something until after teaching it to someone else. Sa mga teachers na student natin, um, sometimes mas nag-gets natin yung topic pag tinuro na natin yung particular topic na yun uh, compared nung tinuro lang sa atin because you will need to know the details nung uh, nung uh, nung concept for you to be able to teach it to someone else ang uh, alternative or uh, corresponding analogy nun sa computer scientist is a person does not really understand something until after teaching it to a computer or expressing it as an algorithm either parang through pen and paper or by coding an actual algorithm sa machine So, uh, I think that's the uh, rationale from Donald Muth. Okay? So, what exactly is an algorithm given na parang it's important in, ano, in, in computer science? Uh, an algorithm is a sequence of unambiguous instructions for solving a problem, um, for obtaining a required output, for any legitimate input in a finite amount. So, yung single sentence na to, we can decompose it further. Uh, an algorithm is a sequence of instructions. Uh, hindi lang siya... Teka lang ha, nawala yung, ano po, yung spotlight. Yan. Hindi lang siya sequence of instructions but necessary na unambiguous yung set of instructions natin or sequence of instructions. This algorithm solves a problem, and when we say solve a problem, we obtain the required output for any legitimate input. Uh, and yung last na um, co- uh, last statement na makukuha natin dito is the algorithm should uh, solve that problem in a finite amount of time. So dapat matapos yung pagrun ng algorithm na to. Uh, ano pa yung mga other characteristics that we could get uh, from this definition? Um, yung first na nabanggit ko is the non-ambiguity requirement. Okay, uh, chineck ko lang yung chat. Uh, wala namang attendance checking. <laughs> may question about attendance checking. Uh, we will also share this recording if may, makaka-encounter kayo ng um, internet um, problem. So, um, uh, babalikan natin yung, yung content nung lecture. Okay? So, 16 na tayo. I think complete naman ang attendance natin now. Okay. So, uh, babalikan ko yung characteristics ng algorithm. The first one is the non-ambiguity requirement. So, each step ng algorithm should be um, non-ambiguous. So, ibig sabihin, um, if we have an algorithm, if I give that algorithm to person one, uh, dapat uh, magagawa niya exactly the same kapag binigay ko, uh, compared kapag binigay ko din sa isang, isa, isa pang person. Uh, bakit um, necessary tong non-ambiguity requirement? Because in the parang previous uh, years, nung unang panahon, hindi pa nag exist yung actual computers. Yung computer talaga ay mga people <laughs> na nagko-compute at gumagawa ng number crunching. So, necessary itong uh, part na to, the non-ambiguity uh, requirement. And then next is the range of input, yung mga legitimate input na um, na kung saan yung algorithm will work has to be specified carefully. So, uh, ang way how to do it is through the problem definition. Sa problem definition, dapat uh, nakaspecify ano lang yung mga legit input nung algorithm na yun. For example, uh, uh, kailangan integer, non-positive, uh, pwedeng non-negative integer lang, and so on. So, um, para expected na mag-run uh, properly yung algorithm natin for those legitimate inputs. 
Um, another uh, characteristic is the same algorithm can be represented in several different ways. So, um, pwedeng in the paragraph form, basta non -ambig uh, ambiguous yung uh, explanation. Pwedeng in a flowchart form. Pwedeng in a pseudocode form. Um, pwede din na in an actual code. Okay, so ano pa? There may exist several algorithms for solving the same problem. So hindi lang isa, but uh, there could be more algorithm uh, algorithms that solve um, the same problem, but may mga differences yung mga yan. In terms of implementation, in terms of what data structure they used, uh, sometimes pwedeng may effect yung language na ginamit for that particular algorithm. Uh, and then, the difference ng mga several algorithms na yon could dramatically um, affect yung speed ng algorithm. So, uh, yung mga several algorithms na yun um, pwedeng ma-assess with respect to their actual running uh, time, uh, memory na ginagamit, uh, ano pa ba, and other performance metrics. Okay? So, Yun yung mga characteristics ng algorithms and in fact nag ano tayo eh nag introduce tayo ng several concepts in just a few slides lang um may tinatawag na problem algorithm input and output and a computer and ano yung mga relationship ng mga to uh, when we say problem usually it is composed of a tuple um an input and an output so yung input should be uh, well defined and should describe the legitimate input of the um, algorithm. And then yung output naman is a specification of the requirement from the input. The problem is a pair uh, of input and output and the algorithm solves the problem if the algorithm can transform the given input para makuha yung required output. And the algorithm is just a steps of uh, or a sequence of unambiguous um, instructions na understandable ng computer. Pwede yung computer na to is a person, pwede yung computer na to is an actual computer na parang gumagamit ng von Neumann architecture, which is yung um, current um, computers natin now, or pwede it's a theoretical model of a computer like a Turing machine, a quantum computers, or other non-conventional types of, compu of computer. Yung mga sequence of instructions na yon that can solve um, the problem ay legitimate algorithm for as long as um, it halts and um, correct yung algorithm. Okay? So uh, let's give an example. Uh, prop, uh, you're familiar, with, of course, with the sorting problem. Yung sorting problem na to ginagamit whenever we try to sort a list, uh, let's say, sa Excel sheet, sa Google sheet, um, whenever we try to sort yung bills natin sa wallet. But mathematically, we can express the sorting problem in a formal way na tinatawag natin siyang computational problem. So again, the problem is composed of two parts, the input and the output. The output should be um, mathematically defined at precise yung definition. So the input is a sequence of, for example, in this case, uh, sorting problem in ano lang, um, legitimate input i numbers, n numbers a sub 1 to a sub n. So we have uh, n of those. It's a sequence, so nagmamatter yung arrangement ng numbers na to. And the output is, is a reordering of this a sub 1 to a sub n represented in this mathematical formula. Teka lang, dapat may prime to. a prime 1, uh, a sub 2 uh, prime, and so on. Such that yung mga a sub i prime is less than or equal to a sub i j. Whenever mas mababa si i, compared to J. So, notice na um, may less than or equal to na relation dito. So, it means pwedeng magkaroon ng uh, same value for A sub I and A sub J. So, for as long as um, non-decreasing yung order. That's the sorting problem. So, for example, we have an instance of the um, input. An instance of an of an input is an actual example or an actual input. So, meron tayong sequence of numbers five, three, two, eight, three, 
And the output is a reordering of this number such that uh, totoo yung specification na naka-indicate dito sa output ng problem. So we have 2, 3, 3, 5, 8. So for all possible i and j, we can say that it holds if we have this input. Okay. Um, there are several algorithms for solving this problem. Um, sa mga fresh pa yung CS135 or any prerequisite course, we have selection sort, insertion, merge sort, and so on. And yung performance ng mga different algorithms na to uh, change depending on um, the actual data structure used or pwedeng the actual algorithm. So may better algorithms compared to others in terms of running time. So we will discuss more about sorting problems in lecture 1.2. Okay, so another example is computing for the greatest common divisor um, given two um, non-negative numbers M and N. So the input here, uh, two non-negative not, both zero integers M and N. Output is the greatest common divisor of M and N. Okay, so when we say greatest common divisor, similar din siya sa greatest common factor of two numbers. So divisible sila both uh, by that GCD of M and N. And um, siya yung highest number na both sila ay divisible sa number na yun. So that's the GCD of M and N. So for example, we have M na 20 and N 15. So for the input specification, both sila non-negative, non-zero both, and both are integers. So it's a legitimate input for GCD of M and N. And then the greatest common divisor of the two is five. Okay, So this is just an example, and we have several algorithms as well to solve this problem. Uh, for this lecture, we will provide two algorithms, the Euclid's algorithm and the consecutive integer checking algorithm. We will also share a procedure, not an algorithm, called the middle school procedure. Well, US-based kasi ito kaya middle school yung tawag nila. Pero sa atin sa elementary, meron tayong, uh, may inutos yung teacher natin before to get the GCD of M and N, okay? It's not an algorithm but a procedure, but later on, we will try to create a procedure, uh, sorry, an algorithm out of this procedure. Okay, so let's start with the Euclid's algorithm. Uh, again, the algorithm can be represented in many forms. The first one is... Parang the first form, the second one is another form. Ito yung pseudocode form. Ito naman ay yung steps with descriptions. Okay, so for the first version ng algorithm uh, representation, we have uh, steps one to three. The first step is um, if n is equal to zero, remember legitimate na ang isa sa kanila ay pwedeng zero but not both of them. Okay, so if n is equal to 0, return the value of m as the answer and stop. This is also called the base case. Um, uh, why? Because any number except 0 is a divisor of 0. So yung m is a divisor of 0. So kapag ka ganyan yung case, for example, like GCD of 5 and 0, then tapos na tayo dun sa computation just by looking at step 1. Kasi ang re-return ng solution natin is GCD of 5 and 0 is 5. Okay, so if not, then proceed to step 2 by doing this. So we divide M by N and assign the value of the remainder to R. Yung step na to is equivalent to computing the um, M modulo N or yung natira when you divide M over N. Yung remainder kasi is important when we try to go to step 3. So for step 3, assign the value of n to m and the value of r to n and then go back to step 1. So this process will um, iterate um, uh, hanggang hindi tayo nakaka-reach dun sa point na yung isa sa kanila is naging 0 na. The second um, number n ay 0 na because we can finally return yung uh, value ng m. So this Euclid's algorithm can be expressed as well in a pseudocode form uh, na medyo mas malapit sa actual coding uh, or any language that, that we know. So this can be represented as uh, as this algorithm na may while loop 
uh, while n is not equal to zero, so ibig sabihin it will fall under step two to three, uh, you do this. So you get the value of r from m mod n, and then you uh, replace m with n, and then you replace yung lower number uh, na r to n. And then you do this hanggang si n ay hindi pa nagiging zero. And then finally, pag natapos na yung loop na to at n is equal to zero, you can return the final value of m. So notice that in this computation, nagbabago-bago yung value ng m and n natin. So uh, essentially, actually, lumiliit, nang lumiliit yung value for m and n. Okay? So how do we um, compute for this one? <laughs> Uh, I I you know I, I I urge na gawin yun din to by hand because um, mas ma magigets nyo pag ginawa by hand. So for example, if we have m and n, try lang nating itrace yung algorithm. We have three variables here. We have m, n, and r. And ini display ko lang dito yung mga subsequent um val values for m, n, and r in every iteration of this for loop. So ang nangyari to compute for the Euclid uh, uh, for this function na Euclid m n uh, initially we have m and n equal to the original input 15 and 20 and 15 so when we go here since m is m sorry n is not equal to 0 magpo proceed siya sa loob ng while loop we have um, r equal to 20 mod uh, 15 R here will be equal to 5. And then, sa, sa succeeding steps, I, yung M natin will be our previous N, which is yung 15. And then, yung N natin will be our R, computed R. And then, we call the Euclid, uh, and then we go to the uh, same loop again. Okay, so, ang gagawin natin is, uh, we set M 15, tapos N equal to 5. Uh, since yung N, natin is not yet equal to zero. Ang gagawin natin is to compute for uh, 15 mod n ulit to get r. Okay. In this case, we have r equal to zero na. And then um, we replace yung m uh, na 5, which is yung previous value ng n. And then uh, yung n, new n will be the previous value of r. In this case, Meron na tayong m and n na yung n ay equal to 0. So, hindi na tayo babalik sa loop na to. And then, mare-return yung value ng m na equal to 5. And that will be the final answer <laughs> kasi natapos na yung loop. That's the Euclid algorithm. Okay. So, you can try this for other, of other values of m and n then. And then, um, check kung ano yung mga nagiging values ng um, m, n, and r. Okay, that's our first algorithm, the Euclid's algorithm. The second one, uh, medyo mas mahaba siya than the previous algorithm kasi itong Euclid's algorithm is actually an elegant way of solving the GCD of M and N. Yung alternative approach is uh, medyo mas naive compared to the first one because here, uh, we try to check all possible uh, parang integers from uh, from n hanggang sa mababang value ng uh, ng n like n minus 1 n minus 2 and so on and check kung yung integer na yon ay yung gcd of both m and n so yung ginagawa for this consecutive integer checking algorithm na na-explain naman dun sa um, name ng function is number 1 assign the value of mean um, m n to t. So, alin yung mababa sa dalawa, you set it as your t. So, we have three var variables here and we also um, create um, ito kasi, before we used r as our variable for m mod n. Pero dito, hindi naman niya dinistinguish yung r, but uh, we also keep yung m mod t and n mod t. Uh, t. So, this is our way to know kung ano, kung uh, saan steps tayo pupunta. Okay? So, the idea is, um, first you get um, t, and your t is minimum between m and n. So, in this case, since we have 20 and 15, we have t equal to the lower number, uh, uh, 15. And then, uh, step 2, divide m by t. So, we have um, yung process na to ay 
captured dito sa MOD. So, the remainder of the division is not equal to zero kasi yung remainder is equal to five. Go to step three. Okay? So, divide N uh, by T. Get the remainder. So, parang uh, 15. And then, ano ba to? T is, taka lang. Uh, if the remainder of this uh, is zero, ah, okay, sorry. Uh, divide M by T. So, we have um, the remainder equal to five. Um, if that is the case, go to step three. Otherwise, go to step four. So, nagpunta tayo sa step four. Ang step four is we decrease the value of T by one. So, 15, 14. So, naging 14 na yung T natin. And then we can go back to step two again. Uh, we compute for M mod the new version of T, which is 14. So, 20 uh, mod uh, ano ba to? 14. We have 6. Okay, since it's not yet equal to zero, then we decrease again and so on. Okay, so we can follow this um, consecutive integer checking until we go. Uh, we can go to uh, five, and then yung magiging value ng m mod t natin at that point will be uh, zero. So pupunta tayo sa uh, step na uh, okay, go to step three, step four, and then. Uh, Kapag naging, uh, G, uh, naging common divisor siya ng one number, we also check kung common divisor din siya ng second number. So we get the greatest common divisor by checking yung consecutive integers na starting from the highest to lowest, making sure na may encounter natin yung mas mataas uh, doon sa uh, GCD ng two numbers. Okay. So... From this steps pa lang, and from this example, you can re readily say that this algorithm is um, mas time-consuming compared to the Euclid's algorithm kasi ilang steps lang yung necessary before we end up with five. E dito, sobrang dami natin kailangan gawin. Okay? So there are algorithms na better compared to performance compared to the other algorithm. Okay? So yung third approach is the middle school procedure. Ang sabi ng teacher natin, step one, find the prime factors of M. Okay? So, um, may example tayo later on dito. Okay? So, step two is find the prime factors of N naman. So, we get the prime factors of both M and N. Identify all common factors in the two prime uh, expansion found in uh, step one and two. And then later on, you compute the product of all the common factors. So, ang... Example is, if we have 20 and 15, uh, all the prime factors of 20 is 2, 2, and 5 because 2 times 2 times 5 is 20. We have 15, uh, 3 times 5, and all of these are prime numbers. So, better time prime factors of M and N. We get the common prime factors of M and N. In this case, ang common fa prime factor nila is just 5. Okay? So, we have 5 here and another 5 here. So, Ang last step is to compute the product. Since 5 lang yung common factor, then the GCB is 5. So let's give another example na hindi lang isa yung common factor. We have 60 and 20. So the prime factors of 60 is 2, 2, 3, 5. 24 is 2, 2, 2, 3. The common factor ng 60 and 24 ay, uh, we have 3. And we have 2 na dalawa. So we have 2 times 2 times 3. So we have uh, yung product nun um, if we follow the step four. We have 12. Mm, okay pa naman, no? So far. Um, the first thing that you'll notice here is that instead of an algorithm, it's called the procedure. It's called the procedure because for step one and two, walang, walang specific way how to compute for the prime factors of M and N. So the way how we can convert this procedure to a... Uh, to an algorithm is to create uh, a modified version of this one. Tapos, we will um, call a particular algorithm that computes for the prime factors of a number. So, if we create that algorithm, this middle school procedure ay magiging legitimate algorithm na. So, ano ba yung mga algorithms that compute for the prime factors of a number? Meron yung old... Uh, old um, 
algorithm called the sieve of Eratosthenes. It's circa 200 BC. Uh, and uh, the method for finding all prime um, factors of a given natural number is through the sieve of Eratosthenes. Ang ginagawa nun is, step one, we have to list down all the numbers from two up to our um, input uh, integer n, so 25. Um, ang gagawin is, it's an iterative procedure na nagtatanggal tayo from time to time ng numbers doon. So, yung list dito, for example, in this second line, um, tinanggal na lahat ng factors of 2. So, wala na si 4, wala na si 6, 8, and so on. And then for the next iteration, we remove all uh, factors of 3. So, natanggal na dito sa line na to si 9, wala na rin si 15. And so on. And then lastly, uh, we have five. Uh, nalampasan na natin to kasi removed na siya dun sa, um, dun sa list of prime factors of uh, 25. Okay, so, um, and then finally, we have five. And then, um, natanggal dito sa part na to C25. Uh, okay, so these are all the prime numbers. Um, below a particular number na 25. And this is the corresponding pseudocode for that algorithm. So since we replaced the ambiguous step with an actual algorithm, we can now compute, we can now say that that middle school procedure is an algorithm. Okay. So just to summarize, we just defined what an algorithm is. We showed an example, which is the GCD of a number Number of two numbers m and n as a computational problem. We showed several algorithms for that problem, and uh, yeah, I think that's the first part. So for the second part, uh, ano nga ba yung mga different steps that we need to consider whenever we solve a problem? In fact, meron tayong flowchart for that, and yung flowchart na yon consists of several steps. The first step is um understanding the problem. So let's go through it one by one. So yung understanding the problem is always the first step when you try to solve a problem. Uh, and by understanding it, you need to read the problem's uh, description carefully. Ano yung legitimate input? Ano yung required na output? And sometimes you need to do a few small uh, examples by hand. Okay? And then you, you also need to think about ano ba yung mga special cases dun sa mga legitimate uh, input. Ano yung mga border conditions, parang ganun. And then, uh, we specify exactly the set of instances of the algorithms uh, that it needs to handle. So sometimes we need to, to list down, ah, ano nga ba yung mga pwedeng maging input nito. For, for some of you na nasa software development na, uh, you can think of it as uh, part ng software testing, na parang, ah, ito pwedeng gawin as part of the test case natin na pwedeng legit input ng, uh, ng user whenever this uh, function will be called, etc. So in this case, parang same same lang ng ginagawa whenever we understand a problem in the algorithm in creating an algorithm uh yeah so when we say instance nga pala uh it's an input to an algorithm so yung kanina if we have a specific input it's called an instance to the problem and it's important not to skip this part okay so yung step to naman uh, itong part na to uh, we decide on several things. And we decide on several things by first identifying muna yung uh, current scenario. For example, like uh, we wanted to know the capabilities of the computational device. Kung, ano yung, kung saan magra-run basically yung algorithm natin. Um, we also want to choose between the type of problem solving na gagamitin. Necessary ba na exact yung solution or optimal yung solution or okay lang na approximate yung solution. And then uh, we also identify um, based from the problem yung appropriate algorithm design technique. Knowing all these factors will help us in actually designing the algorithm. Okay, so isa-isa ulit natin. Ano ba yung mga different capabilities of the computi uh, computational device? Uh, we can think of the architecture. So pwedeng, um, if it is based on a random access machine that resembles a von Neumann architecture, ang limitation nun is that we have we only um, have a capability to uh, execute um, 
instructions on in a sequential manner. So, mga sequential algorithms na, yung nagra-run for this type of architecture. However, if we have another model that allows um, execution of operations in a concurrent manner, we can explore parallel algorithms for that um, particular uh, problem. So that's for the architecture. Uh, sometimes we have limitations sa memory capacity. Sometimes important yung speed compared to the memory capacity. Uh, and uh, sometimes we know kung saan magrarun yung uh, yung algorithms natin and then we know na limited yung connectivity kung saan magrarun yung algorithm na yun. So these are the different computational um, capabilities that we need to consider uh, before we start designing the algorithm. The next one is choosing between exact and approximate problem solving. When we say um, exact versus approximate, uh, pwedeng dalawang bagay yan. Um, the first one ay, may mga problems na hindi talaga natin masosolve exactly because of their um, instances or um, because of the problem itself. Uh, for example, extracting square roots, solving nonlinear equations, and evaluating definitive integrals. Mo, uh, yung mga problems na to deals with real numbers. And we know that the computers cannot really um, represent real numbers hanggang sa pinadulong possible representation because they are irrational numbers. And uh, pwedeng uh, non-halting uh, non yung, yung digits natin for that number. So for these cases, hindi tayo makakakuha ng exact algorithm, but we can only provide an approximate uh, solution for, for these kinds of problems with some tolerable error. Okay? Uh, pangalawa na type ng... Uh, exact versus approximate is when we have a problem na mahirap not because of their instances or kung ano yung pinaglalaroan na, na input, real or discrete. Uh, it is um, hard to be uh, to get the exact solution because yung mga existing algorithms for that problem is too slow at hindi natin maaantay if we will uh, um, require na exact yung solution niya. So sometimes we can um, settle for good enough solution for those kinds of problems. Yung first category of problems, ito yung mga dealing with um, continuous na, uh, na, uh, na numbers. And for this um, set of problems naman, ito yung mga Combinatorial in nature or discrete, hindi continuous, pero the problem itself is a hard uh, problem. So walang nag exist na mabilis na solution. That's why it's okay to settle for good enough solution or approximate solution. So that's number two. Yung third naman na um, assessing ng capability is um, for a particular problem, uh, we need to choose an appropriate uh, algorithm design technique. Um, algorithm design technique, it's just a general way to solve a particular problem. And it is only applicable to some problems. At hindi lahat, sa lahat ng problems, um, compatible yung algorithm design technique na to. Okay, so um, why is it important to first identify yung mga different algorithm design techniques? Because uh, it's... Uh, Walang, walang uh, recipe to solve all kinds of problems, but at least may mga rules or may mga general design uh, design ng problem solving that we can get from this design techniques. So if we know yung design technique na yun, it can serve as our guide in creating a particular algorithm specific for our problem. Okay, so... Um, yung design technique is also uh, used to classify that there are several types of algorithms. So, kung babanggitin ko yung mga different design techniques, some of you, syempre, uh, familiar na with this. So, may mga greedy, uh, greedy design, mga greedy algorithms. So, sabi, sabi dito, it's used to, ano, to classify algorithms. Um, greedy algorithms, may mga dynamic programming algorithms, yung mga linear programming algorithms. And so on. So, marami pang iba't ibang types of those. And sometimes, hindi lang isa yung ginagamit natin uh, na design technique in solving a problem. Sometimes, it's a combination 
of different techniques. So it's it's good to know yung mga uh, existing design techniques that we can use. Okay? So that's the step two pala. <laughs> if we know the design strategy to use, uh, and then yung, yung actual designing ng algorithm, uh, given yung problem, we can do it here in this step. Uh, by combining yung identified design strategy and combining yung appropriate data structure um, na nagagamitin natin based from the requirement of the algorithm. So, yeah. So, in this step, the output here is a representation of that algorithm either in a, nat a natural language or in a paragraph form. Could be in a pseudocode form, flowchart, on an or an actual code. Okay? So, if you have an algorithm na, the next step will be proving its algorithm, ano, algorithm's correctness. So, uh, yeah. So, yung algorithm correctness is defined as follows. The algorithm for a particular problem is correct if it yields a required result for every legitimate input in a finite amount of time. And the manner of proving correctness of an algorithm is using mathematical induction. So for algorithms, it's necessary to identify uh, yung kitawag na loop invariant. And then if you have a loop invariant, which is just a condition, not true, regardless kung, uh, um, regardless kung nasa ang part ng, uh, ng loop yan or anong value ng, ano, ng iteration, uh, ng variable sa loob ng iteration, um, It's uh, so this is necessary before you can uh, prove that a particular problem is uh, is correct. So you need to just um, follow the manner of proving through math mathematical induction. Okay. Uh, and then uh, to prove that an algorithm is incorrect, yung yung kapalit tara nito, you only need one instance. Uh, kung saan mag-fail yung algorithm. So, most of the time, of course, yung correctness ng algorithm is um, mas mahirap is ipakita compared dun sa uh, incorrect yung algorithm because you, you just need to show na uh, may counterexample ka that your algorithm is incorrect. So, another point for proving uh, correctness ng algorithm um, when you analyze the performance of the algorithm, kahit na ganok pa kahirap i-analyze yung performance niya, it's not enough or hindi siya equivalent sa pagpuprove na tama yung algorithm mo. Okay? So, the method for proving correctness is not equivalent to analyzing the algorithm's performance that we will uh, show later on. Okay? And next is, for your algorithm to be correct, hindi lang enough na it yields the required result for a legitimate input for all possible input uh, kailangan maghalt yung algorithm uh, it should uh, run in a finite amount of time okay so iba't iba yung way how to prove correctness of an algorithm for exact algorithms um it's important to to show this yung uh, ito required result for every legitimate input in a finite amount of time um and you need to show that uh, it is optimal. Uh, for optimality, sometimes it's um, for a particular type of problem optimization. So, kailangan mo mapakita that the output is minimum for all possible solution or maximum for all possible solution. And then for approximate solution, uh, yung correctness proof uh, ng algorithm na yun is by showing na um, the error produced does not exceed some predefined limit, or you can guarantee the quality, solution quality of the algorithm. So yun yung proof of correctness if we have an approximate solution. And for exact solution or exact algorithm, uh, yung correctness usually yun yung gamit. Since most of the time we're dealing with um, efficient um, solutions for a problem at lagging exact, exact yung ano, madali lang naman kasi yung problem. Most of the time yung first part. But for some problems na hard, ito yung pinapakita, approximate algorithms. Ah, yes. Uh, may message lang. Ah, yeah. 
uh, annotated tong slides na to, I also included some some missing parts para ma-aid dun sa, dis- uh, uh, sa discussion. So, later on, I will upload the updated slide. Ah, yeah, meron <laughs> Pero sometimes may mga parts na dinagdag ako dito. So, hindi nyo na siya nakita nung in-upload ko siya sa Tuesday. Wala siya dun sa version na yun. Okay. So, nasan na ba tayo? Okay. So, for for example, um, if we wanted to prove yung correctness ng Euclid's algorithm, um, it's enough to show two things. The first one is... To prove that the statement na GCD of M and N is equivalent to the GCD of N, M mod N. Itong second part na to is the uh, pro- process na nangyari inside the while loop na um, we, uh, we, we let N be equal to the value of um, we, let, we let M be equal to the previous value of N and then yung remainder ay yung magiging new R natin. So, if you uh, were able to show that this is true and you, sh- you can show that the algorithm will stop, uh, it's enough to show that the algorithm for the Euclid's algorithm, that the Euclid's algorithm is correct. So, for the second step, second um, idea na dapat mag-stop siya, kailangan mapakita that the second integer, itong part na to, gets smaller on every iteration and then makaka-arrive siya sa... Uh, sa base uh, case or yung step one natin kanina and then the algorithm will stop. Okay? So, yung loop invariant is correct and the algorithm uh, will stop. So, yun yung way how to prove correctness of an algorithm. Okay. And then, if correct yung algorithm natin, we can analyze its um, uh, efficiency, simplicity, and generality. So for efficiency, we um, way tayo how to compute this. For the time efficiency, we have yung um, several notations to identify its running time complexity. Uh, for space efficiency, it's the space uh, or the memory uh, usage or memory um, for, na ginamit ng algorithm na yun. And then for some algorithms na parallel yung nature, we also have another efficiency uh, metric. It's called the process processor efficiency. Uh, sorry, processor efficiency. And then for uh, simplicity, uh, it's also um, important because a while ago, meron tayo nung um, Euclid's algorithm and the consecutive integer checking algorithm. Uh, when your algorithm is simple enough, mas mababa yung chance na magkaroon ka ng problem in terms of um, implementation or coding the algorithm. So, factor din yun for saying that your algorithm is good if it's simple enough to be coded and simple enough to debug later on. And then, uh, generality of a, uh, of an algorithm. Um, the, the algorithm is general if it can solve if it can solve a, a general problem for yeah, so it, if it can solve a general problem. Uh, another generality metric is if um, if your algorithm can accept a lot of uh, parang feasible or legitimate input. So, yeah. so But most of the time, ang take into account lang when you have a particular problem and identifying the best algorithm for a problem is with respect to, to this uh, two, time efficiency and space efficiency. And because hindi na ganun ka expensive ang space efficiency for gen for the general case, um, ang nagiging metric for saying that your algorithm is good is usually through the time efficiency. For space efficiency naman, for some problems siguro na limited yung memory at ito yung um, priority niya, sometimes this is even more um, important compared to the time efficiency. So aside from this three, na metrics for saying that an algorithm is good. Uh, may other assessments pa, uh, sometimes with respect to solution quality, uh, gano ba ka laki yung error na makukuha natin for this algorithm, uh, at ito ba yung parang worst na error na pwede natin makuha, uh, ano pa ba, communication complexity. Um, yung IO usually yung pinakamatagal na type ng operation, um, 
So, gaano siya nangangailangan ng um, information from another um, processor? So, pwede siyang ma-measure with respect to its communication complexity, lalo sa mga algorithms na may kailangang data somewhere else. Uh, and then, yung information complexity, uh, later, <laughs> mas i-describe ko tong, um type ng uh, analysis na to when we deal with types of problems na uh, limited yung information nila. So we will see more of this uh, in part three. Okay? And then the last step is coding. Okay? So for coding, uh, ito na yung parang if you have a, an algorithm, at tapos you know the data structure to use, you know that your algorithm is correct, you 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 identified its efficiency then you're finally ano parang ready to code the algorithm the challenge here is if you have an algorithm um yung translation ng algorithm mo to an actual code is it correct or efficient ba yung pagka-translate mo um for small programs um pwede mag-skip yung correctness na part for as long as pwede siyang mag-undergo dun sa tiyatawag na formal verification. Uh, for large um, uh, programs, uh, hindi correctness yung napuprove but validity of your program uh, through software testing. So, ang um, ginagawa na lang is to uh, to identify na ito lang naman most of the time yung mga legit input at ito yung mga required output. If that's uh, correct, and then okay na yung program natin or yung na code na ano na na code natin for that particular algorithm and we can skip let's say yung uh, proving ng correctness ng algo okay so if we have a running um algorithm which is a program na uh, we can do more than analysis na theoretical. Actually, we can compute for actual running time of the algorithm based on actual input. And then we can actually compute for parang uh, quality or error with respect to a certain data set or intended data set for that uh, problem. So ito yung mga tinatawag na empirical analysis given a particular um, code. Empirical analysis is only possible if meron ng running program. But Sometimes for algorithm design, it's enough na nagi stop na sila for uh, sa step five. So, pwedeng theoretical analysis lang. Okay. So, that's um, the second part ng lecture 1.1. The last part is about important problem types. Okay. So, yeah. So, these are some examples of well known computational problems. Uh, yan. Nakita na natin kanina yung sorting. We also have yung search search problems. Shortest path, minimum spanning tree. Uh, narinig nyo na to sa uh, CS 135 or equivalent prerequisite course ninyo. Uh, and some of these problems have um, efficient solution or mabibilis lang magrun yung mga algorithms nila. Or walang efficient algorithms na nagsasolve sa kanila or no algorithms at all. Okay. And yung pagkakahati-hati nun is categorization by its hardness is with respect to this. Okay. So we know that yung sorting hanggang dito sa primality testing ay may efficient solution. In fact, yung primality testing, very recent lang na na-prove na may efficient solution siya. And yung mga traveling salesman at the towers of Hanoi, sila yung may mga uh, walang nag exist na efficient algorithms. Unless P is equal to NP. So, yun yung mga uh, usual na, um, na statement to show that uh, these problems have no efficient solution. And then lastly, yung program termination, which is also called the halting problem or in Chaidung's ano, problem. Ito yung um, walang uh, a problem na wala pang nage exist, na, walang nage exist na algorithm. Uh, so, that's one possible categorization of computational problems. Another type, another categorization is by checking its actual problem definition um, with respect to ano ba yung description ng legitimate input and yung mga required output. So sometimes our problems can be categorized in terms of ano yung required sa kanila. So yung mga example problem types for this categorization ay yung mga ito. So we have problems na tinatawag na decision problems. 
uh, search sorting, uh, we have counting problems, enumeration problems, uh, problems involving strings and graphs, numerical, geometric, and optimization problems. So if you wanted to go to a particular field in algorithm design, most likely will encounter, um, you will uh, no, try to focus on a particular problem type. And sometimes a combination of a decision problem and uh, on optimization uh, problem. So sometimes uh, may mga labs na ang dibibilang nila na problem is continuous types of problems. There are labs like ACL na combinatorial problems lang. So we'll show you some examples and the definition pa na ng mga different problem types. Okay? The first, um, we can distinguish ay yung mga problems that deals with continuous data or discrete data. So when we say continuous data, yung mga pinaga, pinag uh, Lalaroan niya na type ng data ay mga functions, uh, whether it's linear, quadratic, cubic, mga real numbers, uh, differential equations, uh, integral equations. And then for discrete, ang minamanipulate naman niya na, na, um, na form ay yung mga discrete structures like sets, sequences, strings, graphs, and integers. Uh, for most of our algorithms to be presented in this course, we will focus more on the discrete types. Okay, so there are other courses that um, fo uh, focuses on continuous uh, uh, problems, problems that deal with continuous data. Okay? So the first uh, ano pa, type of uh, problem is the decision, decision, decision problem. It's called the decision problem because the answer for every input instance is either a yes or a no. For example, in primality testing, primality testing is a decision problem. Nang input is an integer n, the output is either a yes or a no. Yes if it's a prime, otherwise no. So, may mga other types of problem na can be um, converted into a decision problem. Sometimes, nag-iiba yung complexity ng problem whenever you co convert one problem to another problem. But not necessarily yes or no lang yung solution for a decision problem. Ibig sabihin nun, it's an easy problem. Okay. So, may tinatawag din ng mga search problems. And yung usual formula is, given a value called the search key, uh, and uh, set, uh, we identify yung location nung, uh, nung search key na yun in the given set if it exists. And then otherwise, it return na hindi nag exist sa problem na yun. And then there are a lot of search algorithms like sequential search. Ito yung naive na you will, will look into each of the element and, look, and identify if the search key is there or not. And then there are um, better ways to compute for uh, for, for solving this problem, and that is through uh, binary search. Um, when we say string processing, problems involving strings naman. So in computer science, yung string is a sequence of characters from an alphabet. Strings of particular interest are, let's say, text strings, um, na pwedeng uh, letters, numbers, special characters. And for a particular area, yung, for example, in bioinformatics, and we're dealing with DNA or RNA sequences, pwedeng limited to several characters lang yung expected na string. Okay? So this is important in string matching and um, com programming languages then, and then compiler design. So there's a lot of uh, string processing um, type of problems in this area. Okay, so another um, type of problem na pair ay yung counting and yung enumeration. Okay, so for counting problems, ang answer dito is usually the cardinality of something. So um, the accounting problem asks for the number of solutions to a given uh, search problem. For example, um, given a positive integer n, count the number of non-trivial prime factors of n. So yung ganun, ang nire-return natin is the cardinality. Yung corresponding enumeration variant of the counting problem is when we enumerate all possible uh, non-trivial uh, non prime factors of n. Okay? So sometimes hindi mas madali dahil cardinality lang yung ina-output ng counting problems, but sometimes we also need to enumerate all so that we can count. Yan. Uh, ano pa ba? Another type of problem ay yung mga problems that involve graphs. 
So informally, a uh, graph is a collection of points uh, called vertices, and then they are connected with line segments called um, edges. This is important for modeling uh, some real life problems, like uh, modeling the internet. Uh, we have the vertices as the machines and then the connections as the possible connection of those machines. A uh, communication network, pwedeng cell sites yung mga vertices natin and then there's a connection if um, reachable itong connection itong cell site na to uh, with respect to the other cell site pwedeng transportation network so pwedeng these are actual road um road lines uh, from one city to another and then in general relationship uh, of different entities where entities yung mga vertices natin and yung edges are the relationship between those Entities. So it's a powerful um, structure that we can use in uh, in creating a particular problem involving uh, graphs. And then there are a lot of um, ano na, uh, solutions na we can use if we have um, a graph as a as our combinatorial structure. Okay, so example nga nung mga graph problems natin include shortest path, uh, reachability, whether a particular vertex is connected from uh, another vertex, uh, if there is a path from one vertex to another, uh, traveling salesman problem. Uh, it's another uh, hard problem wherein it also involves a shortest path, pero instead of a path, kailangan makabalik dun sa pinanggalingan. And the total sum of the parang edge weights should be minimum. Uh, sometimes uh, may mga problems din involving community detection or finding um, interesting groups of vertices na may certain uh, relationship and your relationship is stronger than the rest. So yeah, those are some examples of graph problems. And then we also have numerical problems. Another uh, um area to na hindi usually naara sa ECL, it involves yung mga continuous steps of data, uh, solving uh, linear equations, um, yeah, so computing definite integral, system of equation, and evaluating functions. So there are a lot of approximation algorithms for these types of problems. And then geometric problems, if we deal with input na um, composed of geometrical objects like points, line segments, polygons, and polyhedra. So, yeah. So, another example, uh, two examples of geometric problems, yung convex hull problem. Given a set of points, we can, uh, we need to create um, convex or identify kung part uh, ba siya nung, uh, nung border, nung convex natin. Uh, closest pair problem is uh, identifying whether uh, alin sa mga points na to yung closest pair. So the naive solution here is to check all possible pair and check kung sino yung closest. And then lastly, lastly na ba to? Yeah. We have um, yung mga tinatawag na optimization problems. There are two variants, the continuous optimization problems. And the second one is the discrete um optimization or combinatorial optimization problems. I'll show you what uh, continuous optimization would look like. Ang standard form ng um, continuous optimization is that given an input na function, uh, we are trying to get the minimum uh, evaluation of this function and we wanted to know kung ano yung x na minimize ng function na yan. So uh, the form is minimize something uh, subject to several ito yung mga tinatawag na constraints. Some are uh, inequality constraints like this one, and some are called uh, equality constraints. And the method how we can get um, minimum or maximum x uh, for this uh, function is through derivatives. So there are existing analytical solutions to solve this problem. Ang challenge lang for computer science is how we can represent this so that the error will be parang minimum kasi real, we're dealing with real numbers. So that's for the continuous optimization. For combinatorial optimization, uh, it's a uh, quadruple in form. Merong um, set of input instances uh, defined then yung um, a set of feasible solution. Ganun then it's a minimization or a maximization uh, of a particular objective function. 
hindi to yun. Yeah, this, the G is the goal function or the objective function. Uh, ah, teka. Ito pala. We used M uh, of X and Y as the measure of um, the function. So this is also called the objective function. And we, uh, and we have G, which is the goal, either to minimize that objective function or maximize. Okay, so some examples of a combinatorial optimization problem, familiar na tayo because uh, we, we encountered this already, yung mga knapsack problem, okay? minimum spanning tree, traveling salesman problem, and so on. So we minimize or maximize the uh, objective function. Uh, and then we need to specify the set of instances and identify the set of visible solution. So um, we can think of as a... Uh, we can think of this combinatorial optimization problem as a search uh, problem then because um, we need to uh, check or identify which x maximizes or minimizes yung objective function. Ang problem lang usually is the search space is very large. May tinatawag na ano, um, combinatorial uh, explosion kasi even if your i or set of instances ay maliit lang, the total number of feasible solution is very large. So, yun yung challenge for combinatorial optimization. Okay. So, again, what's the summary of 1.1? Uh, we defined what an algorithm is. We identified that there are several characteristics of an algorithm. Uh, we showed an example problem, GCD of M and N. We showed uh, two algorithms for GCD. The Euclid's algorithm, which is a simple algorithm, and a good algorithm then. And then uh, the CIC, the consecutive integer checking algorithm. Uh, and then, na mas mabagal compared to the Euclid's algorithm. And then one procedure na convert natin into uh, an algorithm by providing the subroutine na sieve of Eratosthenes for GCD. And then we also showed that there are six steps in solving a problem. And, and then we also showed several important problem types. Okay. Next is, um, we will look back dun sa dalawang characteristic ng algorithms. Uh, there may exist several algorithms for a problem. Nakita na natin to for Euclid's algorithm, but we will also show it for a sorting problem. Okay. So, uh, we will also show that these algorithms can have two, um, can, can have dramatically different uh, speed. Dun sa naunang dalawang algorithm, we didn't um, compute for the running time of the, those algorithms. And so, parang intuition lang na mas mabagal itong isa or mas, ma, mas maganda itong isa in terms of running time. But for lecture 1.2, we will show how we can say that one algorithm is faster compared to the other. We will show uh, na may tatawag ng insertion sort. This is an algorithm for sorting and merge sort. So for merge sort, we will also ano, um, in, be introduced to um, the idea of recurrences. And um, since merge sort is a recursive algorithm, meron tayong parang general idea how we can identify the running time of recursive algorithms. So this is meant to be an introduction lang to analysis of algorithms. Yung mas detailed version of this lecture will be next week pa. Uh, 